What's up, everybody? Matt Kajeski here, back again with the Odd Shopper channel. And we're talking prize picks, college football edition. It's week 10. We're going to get into the main slate. But before we get started, make sure to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all other content goes live. And of course, we're brought to you by prize picks. We'll be talking about them throughout the show. But prize picks, they're a site that allows you to make lineups of player props. We're talking overs, unders on all major statistical categories. We're talking college football today. So that's passing yards, rushing yards, touchdowns, fantasy points. They have it all. And it's not just that. They have NBA, NFL, MLB, whatever it is that you like. And you can mix and match these across entries. So you could do a lineup that has both college football and NFL and NBA. You can really mix and match however you choose. And they have a special offer for you guys. You're going to get a first match deposit bonus up to $100 when you click the link in the video description below and make your first deposit. And you're going to get one free month of Stochastic Plus Platinum. So make sure to check them out. And we're going to do just that right now, bringing you to the prize picks board, talking some props for this weekend. There's a few I really like and that I already hit myself. And hopefully we can still get some value on. They're still showing the same numbers right now. Literally did this right before the video started. So let's dive into the board. I want to kick things off with the Oregon game. We're going to be looking at Bo Nix over passing yards. He's at 265 and a half, which I think is a particularly strong number in this in individual game environment. You look at Bo Nix and really this Oregon team this year. It's been a phenomenal season, but they're massive favorites over Colorado. It's 31 and a half points. So one thing you do run the risk of in games like this is maybe they rest their starters at some point, but I usually have this in mind. If it plays to the spread and Oregon's up by 31 points, Bonix probably had something to do with it. And right now, his passing yard average is 277 and a half per game. That's on 31 attempts. Now, maybe the attempts drop in this game, but efficiency should rise. Colorado has a bottom five secondary in college football, and that's not an exaggeration. Bottom five, it is on the board. They're laying 8.1 yards per pass attempts. Bo Nix is arguably the best signal caller this defense has faced. Really, the only thing working against Bo Nix here is the potential for just reduced playing time. Otherwise, if you project him for 100% of the snaps with his current statistics this year, not adjusting at all, not adjusting for increased efficiency against a terrible secondary, he projects over 300 yards. This literally comes down to how much you think Nix plays. And again, my philosophy is here. If Colorado keeps it close, well, good for Bo Nix. He'll play the whole game. If they play to the 31 point spread, I think Bo Nix had something to do with it. Easy over for us on Bo Nix. One where we like the under is actually another pass heavy offense, but we'll talk about some game environment stuff. It's Aiden O'Connell for Purdue under 289 and a half. He's taken on Iowa. So, first things first, Iowa has a great defense. This total is quite low in the context of the entire slate. Purdue generally playing fast, pass-heavy schemes. Well, the total is 39 points. So right away, we should be projecting less passing yardage than O'Connell typically averages, which is 324. But this game also has severe weather concerns. Winds of 50 miles an hour. And those have persisted throughout the week. It's Friday morning. The game is a little over 24 hours away. The weather forecast should be fairly accurate right now. So not only is it a stingy defense on the other side, Iowa allows... 5.6 yards per pass attempt. It's an incredibly difficult weather game and Purdue's a very heavy pass team, 60% pass. Are they still going to have the same effectiveness in this game? I already liked the under before we got the weather news. Now I think this is a smash play. The over under is tumbling. I think this is one that makes a lot of sense, not just from a game environment perspective, but from a weather perspective. I think that's the first time we've talked about it this year. Let's dive into some rushing props. There's one that really stood out to me, and it's a weird game. It's Cody Schrader of Missouri. Yes, Missouri. Weird game, I know. But let's talk about this Missouri team. They've gone through some struggles, I think is the kindest way to say it, this year. But they've come on strong lately, and this is a strong game against Kentucky on deck. Kentucky plays pretty good defense overall. They are allowing 4.2 yards per rush attempt, so that does help Schrader here. But their coaching staff noted recently, like, they're going through some changes. They're cutting some players out of the rotation, and they did just that last week. This had previously been a 50-50 timeshare between Schrader and Nathaniel Pete. Looking two games back, Schrader 14 carries Pete 
11 carries. Then their coaching staff came out and said, all right, we're going to go with our dudes. We're not rotating anymore. We're playing our guys that we trust. Schrader outcarried Nathaniel Pete 22 to zero, 22 to zero in their most recent game. If we expect this to persist, which I do, Schrader played well. I think this is just a severe under projection. It's a projection based on his workload over the course of the year, not his most recent game, which again, there's that clear delineation where Missouri decided to ride with him as the lead back. So I think this is an easy over, even though the total in this game is pretty low. Again, it's 40 points, but I'm not really too worried about Kentucky's run defense. I think this is a solid play. Let's go to the passing game. We'll talk about two props that I like here. The first one, it's actually one we've hit an under on in the past, if I'm not mistaken. Darius Davis, we took an under on him early in the year after he had a screen pass that he housed. But 39 and a half here, this is a role change situation that I, I think we need to highlight here. TCU has rotated their wide receiver three and four quite a bit. But recently, their last game, here's how the routes went. We we know Quentin Johnson's their number one. That's not up for debate. But the routes for Darius Davis continue to rise. 79% of the routes last week, that was second on the team. He eclipsed Savion Williams, who'd been second on the team in routes in really every single meaningful game this year. Darius Davis is second on the team in targets. It, it was no concern with target share for Days. It was routes. Could we get him on the field consistently? And he's now played at least 65% of the routes in three straight games, 79% in their most recent game. If he plays this many routes, I guess I should say participates in this many routes on this team, he's going to eclipse this mark. Even on his partial route share, which he's been running through most of the year, he's averaging 43 and a half yards per game. This game overall has a 69 and a half total. Yes, Texas Tech plays good defense, but they play at the speed of light. So it's not even, okay, this team can defend TCU. They might be able to. I'm not sure. TCU is the most explosive offense in the country, maybe outside of Tennessee, but if there's going to be more plays than normal, that's just more chances for Darius days to hit this over and compared to Quinton Johnson. He's really low here, 39 and a half yards. It's just flat out too few in this spot. Getting to our last one here. This is a fun one. It's a similar situation and a tough one to project overall. We're going to go to Georgia's lad McConkey. Yes. Lad McConkey, not Brock Bowers. I think Brock Bowers is fine here too. There's just more value on McConkey 50 and a half yards for him. The total in this game is 66. This is the game of the week. It's Tennessee taking on Georgia. So right away, this stands out. High total should be a lot of plays. 66, 66 and a half in some spots. And Tennessee has some suspect pass defense. Anthony Richardson threw for over 400 yards on this team. We just saw them dismantle Kentucky, but Will Levis got injured in the game. So it's tough to take anything away from that. But I'll just say they've shown cracks. We've seen cracks from this Tennessee secondary Georgia's best, best path to points is through the air. And the main concern with Georgia pass catchers all year long has been their limited routes. McConkie has a 64% route share. Well, they've played one of the easier schedules in the SEC, and that's no slight to Georgia. You can only play who's on your schedule. Their toughest game came against Oregon in week one. They blew him out, so McConkie didn't even have a full route share then. However, in their most recent game, McConkie participated in 95% of the routes. Yes, 95%. When the going gets tough, McConkie is on the field every play. Bowers is on the field every play. Everybody else rotates. We saw that now twice this year against Missouri. He had a heavy route share, and last week he did as well. So in this game, the spread is projected to be tight. It's one of the few times we've had a tight spread for Georgia all year long. It's about eight points, eight and a half in some spots. If it plays to this, I'm expecting McConkie to be on the field 90, 95% of the routes again. He only had six targets last week on this. Brock Bowers had eight. But again, we need the routes. This is where the consistency comes from. He already averages 51 and a half yards per game on the limited route share he's participated in. I think with more routes here, we can expect him to be higher. So this is another over for us. To recap, we've got Bonix over 265 and a half passing. Aiden O'Connell under 289 and a half passing. Cody Schrader of Missouri over 55 and a half rushing. Lad McConkey over 50 and a half receiving and looks like I forgot to add the Darius Davis one in here. Let me add that quick. 39 and a half for Davis. All right. A couple other things I want to touch on with five. I, I love to run fives because if you hit all five of them, you get 10 X. If you hit four, you get two X. And even if you get three, you get 40% of your money back. But if you're not playing five, let's say you're playing four or three, 
you have a couple options here. So I'm going to remove Bonix just to show you guys the options I'm talking about. You can either play the power play or the flex play. With the power play in four, you get 10 extra entry fees if all four are correct, but you need to get all four correct. With a flex play, you can get all four correct and you 5x, but if you only get three, you still 1.5x. So as you can see, if you're running lineups of three or four, you have a little bit of flexibility in how you want to play it. Again, my favorite is to run the five. I also like running twos. I generally play twos and fives, but that's a little more strategy, perhaps for a different day. But those are the five we're rolling with. Let me know in the comment section what you think of those. The, the board is massive. So if there's one that really stands out to you and you'd like my opinion or anyone's opinion on the channel, leave a comment, let us know. We'll get back to you. And if it's closer to lock and I'm not on YouTube, you can always reach me on Twitter. I'm at Matt underscore Gajeski. They're more than happy to chop it up, talk college football, talk prize picks. And of course, thanks to prize picks for sponsoring the video. Love covering these props. Really fun wrinkle to the college football Saturday slate. But Hit the thumbs up button on the way out. Subscribe to the channel. Can't tell you how much that helps us. And if you've already done so, thank you. Otherwise, thanks for watching, guys. Good luck. We'll see you again next time.